In this video, I give a brief overview of NAFTA and its effects on the Mexican economy. Because the topic is so large, I will leave a discussion of NAFTA's effects on Mexican manufacturing and agriculture to separate videos. Here we have a graph of Mexican real per capita income as a percentage of both U.S. and Canadian per capita incomes. One of the main reasons that Mexican policymakers were eager to establish such a free trade agreement was the belief that doing so would allow Mexican income to catch up to the level of its northern neighbors. From this graph, we can see that Mexico's goal of catching up hasn't been very successful. Mexico's relative per capita income fell sharply in 1995 with the currency crisis. We can see it relative to Canadian income here and to U.S. income here. Since then, it has hovered at around 32% of Canadian income and around 28 or 29% of U.S. income. Now, we want to be careful in this video not to overinterpret the data. For instance, we don't know what the counterfactual is. If Mexico hadn't entered into NAFTA, perhaps incomes would have diverged even more. In addition, the phase-out of tariffs under NAFTA often occurred gradually and over many years. During this time, many other forces affected the Mexican economy. For instance, the U.S. is Mexico's biggest trading partner, so shocks to the U.S. economy, like we've witnessed in the last five years, will affect the Mexican economy. Second, Mexico had a serious currency crisis, like I mentioned, at the end of 1994, that threw the economy into recession. And third, policymakers have undertaken other economically significant reforms, including privatization of both state-owned enterprises and agricultural land, trade liberalization with other countries, and banking reform, to name just a few. Finally, we're discussing macro, macro aggregates here, which disguise a lot of the microeconomic complexity. For example, research has shown that the benefits of NAFTA haven't accrued equally to all sectors and regions. The northern states, which had the most infrastructure, income, and education before NAFTA was enacted, have also gained the most from the free trade agreement. Southern, more poor states have seen less benefits. From the previous slide, we saw that average incomes in Mexico aren't catching up to those in Canada and the U.S., but what does GDP growth look like since NAFTA was signed? We can see from this figure that GDP took a big hit in the 1995 currency crisis. Right here. It recovered quickly, growing by between 5 to 6 percent in the subsequent three years. Some have argued that the signing of NAFTA helped Mexico recover from the crisis much faster than normal and ensured that policymakers held fast to market reforms even under tough conditions, which was a reassuring move to investors. GDP fell by 6% again in 2000, but again started to improve as the U.S. economy grew in the early 2000s. As is evident from the figure, the global financial crisis has taken a toll on the Mexican economy. In 2009, GDP growth fell by 6.6%. Even though income in Mexico hasn't converged to that of the U.S. and Canada, research has found that NAFTA has improved other indicators of development in the country. This figure charts the percentage of people living in extreme and moderate poverty. The former is defined by the Mexican government as those living on less than $1.50 a day in rural areas and less than $2 a day in urban locations. Moderate poverty is defined as living on less than $2.70 a day in rural areas and $4 a day in urban areas. You can see from this figure that the currency crisis in 1995 significantly increased extreme and moderate poverty in the country. Rates improved in the subsequent years, but didn't reach 1994 levels again until 2002. More specifically, the percentage of people in the extreme poverty category went from 24% in 2000 down to 14% in 2006. The financial crisis pushed poverty back up to 18%, though, by 2008, and the percentage in moderate poverty category follows a similar trend. Here we have a graph of the average real wage index in Mexico where 2005 represents the base year of 100. Now, wages are determined by many different factors, so in no way can we say definitively from this figure that NAFTA had an influence one way or another on wages. Wages fell by more than 15% in 1995 with the currency crisis, but as you can see in the figure, they increased in subsequent years until dropping substantially during the financial crisis. The research studying the effect of NAFTA on wages has produced mixed results. One of the reasons is probably because trade affects skilled and unskilled workers differently. Some studies argue that NAFTA caused the gap between the two to increase, where skilled workers are now making almost three times as much as unskilled workers, as opposed to about two and a half times as much in 1988. Overall, trade between Mexico and the U.S. has soared in recent decades, but at least some research argues that this was due more to Mexico's trade liberalization in the 1980s than it was to the signing of NAFTA. 
Either way, trade increased throughout the second half of the 1990s until the recession in the U.S. in 2001 brought the volume down. As the U.S. economy recovered, so did U.S.-Mexico trade, at least until the recent crisis. Research has identified a number of factors that might explain why incomes in Mexico aren't converging to U.S. incomes. First, some have argued that the economic reforms of President Salinas in the late 80s and early 90s actually set the country back in the sense that they weren't paired with strong institutional and regulatory reform. Thus, some of the reforms, like privatization of the banking system, ended up creating new problems that needed to be addressed. Second, Mexico could have used to follow up the initial reforms with second-tier reforms like overhauling labor laws, but these have been avoided because of their political sensibility. And third, policymakers have been unable to efficiently counteract external shocks via fiscal and monetary policies. Much attention has been devoted in the media to anti-NAFTA sentiment, especially among farmers unhappy with how things have progressed. But perhaps surprisingly, given these reports, the majority of the public report positive views of globalization generally, and NAFTA specifically. The Centro de Investigación y Docencia Económicas, or CIDE, which is a university in Mexico City, and the Mexican Council on Foreign Relations surveyed the general public as well as elite opinion in Mexico, and the results are displayed in the figure here. The elite were made up of 259 representatives from government, politics, business, media, academia, and non-government organizations that had a, quote, interest in international affairs or professional ties with other countries. Both the public and the elite groups put export promotion as one of Mexico's two most important fo foreign policy objectives and considered trade to be vital for increasing employment and poverty reduction. In fact, 79% of the public and 96% of the elite supported increasing Mexico's international trade. All of the information in this video, as well as most of the figures, comes from a paper by Ángeles Villarreal. It's a 2010 Congressional Research Service report. It's extremely informative, and it talks about NAFTA and its effects on the Mexican economy.